4,000 years after mankind's ruin. The cattle were restless today, hundreds of them shifting from foot to foot in their pens, looking to their masters with fearful, tentative eyes. Among them, a few gnashed their dirty, chipped teeth and clenched their muscles in belly contained hate. The tension between animal and master grew hour by hour. We will need to do something to pacify the livestock soon, Your Excellency, or I fear they may revolt. The head captain of Endella's honor guard advised her warily, his tone placating. Endella sneered as she watched the writhing mass of bodies from the ramparts of her fortress. The livestock, valuable though they were, were never to enter the castle halls unless it was to be butchered for banquet, or if one of her nobles fancied the look of one of them. Endella herself considered fornication with animals an act even too debased for her extreme tastes, but whatever hobbies kept her vassals entertained, she would allow. Yes, the humans were housed in pens like pigs or cows, where they belonged. They sheltered from inclement weather in dingy stables, dug beneath the fortress grounds, packed shoulder to shoulder, and fed slop from troughs. In the beginning, when the Blood Eaters first arose in the night to prey on poor defenseless man, there had been fighting, rebellion, war. Now, no human in Nindela's herd would dare even meet the eyes of her lowliest sable hand. A revolt was, she decided, not possible. How these animals had ever ruled the earth before her and her kind came along, she would never understand. My animals haven't acted up in decades, Captain. What makes you think anything will change now? She tossed her long, silky dark hair over her shoulder in a black wave, and turned on a heel to re-enter her personal suite. The Captain followed, along with the rest of her guards, silent as the grave. Your Excellency, if you would recall the events of the last week. My weeks are all very eventful, Captain. Endella snapped. I am referring to your most recent banquet, Your Excellency, he replied bluntly. Endella was well aware of the banquet he spoke of. It had been a lavish display, intended to remind her subjects of the gifts her leadership brought. Endella's was a tenuous rule. Her territory squeezed between the lands of three other, far more powerful, bloody to fight them. Banquets are common in Endella's court, her herd of subservient human livestock allowing her and her subjects to eat well nearly every single night. But her last grand feast had been a special delicacy. Human blood and flesh was better fresh than aged, and a fresh litter of little manless had been born only a week earlier. Many of the older sows had barely objected to their children being taken, desensitised as they were by years of separation from their young, though a few had attempted to fend off the handlers and were subsequently slaughtered on the spot. Their meat was the appetizer Indella had tempted her coarse tongues with before serving up the freshly carved little carcasses. Endella couldn't imagine what umbrage the captain could have with her lavish display, and she said as much. The captain winced. Unlike Endella, he had been human as little as two centuries ago, before she had personally turned him. Recognition of human behaviour was still fresh in his mind, compared to hers. The umbrage is not with me, Excellence. He wisely took a step back, out of arm's reach from his lady. But humans are particular about their young. And... Endella was growing impatient. You try my patience, Captain. Do not mince words with me. The Captain's helmeted head turned to glance out of the ornate glass doors of Endella's stateroom to the rampart beneath which her livestock wallowed. The parents of the manners we ate will be hungry for revenge, hungry enough to bow to rise up against you. Do you think them a threat? Endella sneered, but the question was legitimate. This fellow was captain of her personal guard for a reason. Vain glory, ambition, or schemes were far from his thoughts and he offered a calm and analytical approach to matters of conflict. It was why she had bothered turning him in the first place. Your court numbers 300 in total, Excellence, the captain began, measuredly. Your hers, close to two million. Even if we were to kill every last one of them, their corpses would suffocate us. Endella smiled without humour. This was fantastic news. Uppity humans offered her a rare chance to further entertain her fellow blood eaters. She hoped a number of those human sires were the bold sort. It was time to play a game. The humans were separated into groups of 3,000 each, making for a great number of groups to choose from. One at a time, Endella ordered her soldiers to let each group into the plains that stood barren beyond her fortress walls. When the first group had assembled, a few tried to break and run. Most were not so foolish. The runners were shot. Carcasses dragged back to the butchery to make into meals for later. Now Endella stood before the humans. Garbed in a gaudy scarlet silken gown that emphasised the sensuous curse of her perfect frame. In her hand was naked steel, a curved blade arcing down from her hand to rest in the dust beside her bare feet. 
Greetings, she shouted down to her animals. Once she was satisfied, they quietened. A sea of thin, dirty, hopeless faces filled her view. Pathetic. As she paced alongside the first row of cattle, she kept looking for flashes of defiance, steely-eyed looks or bad teeth. And the thing to indicate some shred of will left in these dead-minded little creatures. There was nothing of the sort. I am told by my soldiers that some of you may be feeling dissatisfied with their lives here. Unhappy, even, with how I ripped your children limb from limb and sucked each shred of newborn flesh from their tiny bones. A few bristles here and there in the crowd. Several humans struggling to contain their rage and hate. Others clearly more concerned with what was coming next. Let it not be said that I am an unfair mistress. Indella beckoned her captain forward, and he stepped to her side, drawing out her rusty, jagged chunk of iron, unfit to be called a sword, and tossing it to the dirt. We are going to play a little game together, you animals and I, she told them. A game I always play when my livestock grows restless. Let the bravest and strongest among you take up the sword and give battle to me, as your feeble kind once did four thousand years ago. And for each minute that this champion, she lifted her voice sardonically at this, survives, I will allow one of you to go free. There was a quiet murmuring in the crowd of humans, and Della allowed a cruel smile to creep across her face, a face of such pristine and youthful beauty that few would have guessed she had lived for over 30,000 years. Before long, a single woman dashed out from the crowd, wild-eyed, and snatched up the rusty blade. Ah, and Della chuckled, a volunteer. She sped forward as the girl clumsily lifted the sword. She didn't even have time to swing it, and Della's close fist snapped into her exposed throat, crushing her windpipe like it was cardboard. The young woman dropped the sword, clutching at her neck and gurgling, before pitching backwards to the ground. She remained there, convulsing for almost a minute before she expired. Forty-eight seconds. Not enough to earn freedom for any of her fellows. What a shame! Indella called out in mock surprise. I was sure she would be the one to free you. Who's next? Her vassals were already politely applauding, but the real fun hadn't started yet. These were just the preliminaries. One by one, Indella went through the groups of humans goading out the rebellious few to crush them in front of their friends. Not one lasted a full minute. The young and strong wasted themselves, trying, while the sick, old and feeble little ones watched in horror. For sport, Indella allowed her court to partake in the fun as well, clinging to their unbeating heart's content, as long as angry humans kept throwing themselves into the meat grinder. By the time the day drew to a close and the sun was setting, the last group of human captives was brought into the field. Indella repeated her speech, bored by now of the repetition. This group was comprised mainly of elderly and cripples, with only a few strong ones mixed in. She doubted there was any fun to be had here. As she barked the last words of her challenge, the crowd parted like water, to allow a single man through. An old man, at least for his species, sixty at least, and Ella couldn't help but laugh. Really, truly, you gutless worms, she howled with glee. This is the champion you choose? She gazed at the downcast eyes and sullen faces of her animals. She saw what this was. It was cowardice, plain and simple. Its humans were too weak even to try and fight for their freedom, and chose instead to offer up this old, wizened thing, so as to have themselves spared. Again, Endella marvelled at how such a pathetic people could ever have held sway over the world. With painful slowness, the old man bent and scrambled in the dirt to lift the rusted sword from the cold hands of the last young man to wield it. Hands that had been cut from his body by Endella's sword, just before she had pulled his jaw from his face and crushed his heart in her fist. Indella lifted her own sword in a parody of an honourable salute, smirking as she prepared to finish things up for the evening. With a thin smile, the old man returned the gesture, just as mockingly. That was annoying. Indella surged forward, legs siving up to kick this upstar's head clean from his shoulders. To her surprise, despite the attack's speed, the old man ducked just in time to avoid her leg, and before the camp swing up towards Indella's outstretched knee. Impossible! Indella pirouetted, the rusty sword missing her pristine flesh by inches before executing a downward slash that should have spit this insolent old fuck in two. He parried. Despite her superior strength and speed, the warrior old man shot her sword off of his own, deftly avoiding the bind as he did so. This was unheard of. No human reflexes were this quick, and no humans in a herd had learned to wield a blade properly in centuries. They clashed back and forth, and Della growing faster and faster as her fury and embarrassment grew. She was being made to look weak before her court. A blood eater's crown was wanted with strength. If a mere human, an elderly bull who could barely lift a sword, was able to fare so well against her, what was to stop one of her ambitious vassals from claiming her rule for himself? Faster and more furiously she struck, over and over, playing the familiar movement she had perfected over thousands of years of repetition. No opponent had challenged her like this in years. Her sword player had grown complacent, repetitive. 
Every blow the old man evaded, every swipe he parried, despite how much faster and stronger she was than him. And Ella gritted her teeth as a few scattered chuckles came from the gang of onlookers. One minute had passed, then two. The old man's face was shiny with sweat, his skin slick with it. Two minutes of continuous battle against so superior foe would exhaust a younger man. For the old boy, it must have been a struggle. His breathing was ragged, and Adela finally saw an opening in his pristine defence. She fainted, drawing his guard away before closing for a clean kill. It was a familiar move, her favourite trick to bring a difficult duel to a close, but she hadn't had need of it for decades. Finally, this fast would be over- A trap. The old man had lured her in with that opening, and now brought that rusted blade into the bind with Adela's own. She shoved where his resistance seemed weakest, overpowering him, and now got the point of her sword to pierce his chest end. He split the bind, twisting his torso so that the blade of her sword scraped along a rib, a ram that chipped and rusted chunk of iron up to the hilt in her breast. Endella was too shocked to even feel the pain. Rather, only the severe coldness of the iron gave her any indication at all that he had killed her. The open fields were silent. Neither the blood eaters nor the human herd could believe what had happened. Endella felt her strength leaving her. Her heart was pierced through. Death clouded the edges of her vision, but now she got a better look at the old man's face. She hadn't seen it before with how old and brown he was, but Andella remembered that face. You were there, she gasped out, clawing at him as her legs failed her and she dropped to her knees. The old fellow's lip curled cruelly, and she saw his chin inclined just a touch in affirmation. Yes, the gesture seemed to say, I was. Andella understood by the time she died. This was not the first time she'd hosted this game. Five years ago, 15, 25, 30, 37, 48, he had been there at every one, biding his time, waiting, watching. His whole measly life, the old man had observed how Indela fought, how she killed his people. His entire life, devoted to the singular goal of killing her. Her fingers grasped at him as the last of her strength ebbed. With a final gasp, she pitched forward into the dirt, realising too late just how and why man had ruled.